amazing artists. Today, we are going to learn about some Hispanic artists. This is just going to be a quick overview of Hispanic artists. Hispanic is a language-based term that describes people from Spain or another Spanish-speaking country, including Latin America and the Caribbean. So we're just going to real quickly um, have a brief overview of some Hispanic artists that you can draw inspiration from for your upcoming project. So this is Salvador Dali. He was born in Spain. Dali received his formal education in fine arts in Madrid. He was influenced by Impressionism and the Renaissance masters from a young age, and he became increasingly attracted to Cubism and avant-garde movements. He moved closer to Surrealism in the 1920s and joined a Surrealist group. His best known work is The Persistence of Memory, which is this clock, melty clock one right here. And it was completed in August of 1931. He's one of the, it's one of the most famous surrealist paintings and one of his most famous paintings. He lived in France throughout the Spanish Civil War before leaving to head to the United States where he achieved commercial success. And let me tell you something about the surrealist friends. They did not think commercial success was the way to go. And he lost a lot of friends when that happened. After he lived in the United States, he moved back to Spain and he developed his style even further. Dolly was also just, I don't know, a big weirdo. And I have a lot more to say about that, but we're going to move on. This is Jose Guadalupe Posada. He was a Mexican political lithographer, which meant he used printmaking as his primary method of creating art. And his, he would make these um, caliveras is what he called them, which means skull, but they refer to these skeletons that he would um, draw and then engrave and then print. Um, doing everyday things, and he did them as social commentary, and um, and they're very cool, and he's influenced a lot of other people. This is Victoria Velasana. She is from Guadalajara, Mexico. She's a textile installation and street artist. Now, of course, for your project, you're not going to have access to textiles, but I thought you might enjoy the way that she incorporates photography into her work. And you can certainly take some of her ideas into your work. Um, she has themes uh, that involve history, pop culture, and social causes. This is Faviana Rodriguez. She is a political poster designer and has been working since the 1990s. Um, she was involved in the struggle for racial justice in Oakland, California. She's known for using her art as a tool for activism. She uses graphic design and collage in many of her works. This is Pablo Picasso. He was a Spanish sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist, and theater designer who spent most of his adult life in France. One, he's one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. He's known for co-founding the Cubist movement and invented constructed sculpture, which is when you take a bunch of different objects and you kind of connect them together to create a sculpture. And he is um, known for co-inventing collage with um, Matisse and Bark. And um, he, as you can see, has lots of different collage stuff here. This is Guernica. It's one of his most famous paintings. And then over here, this one that doesn't really look like something you would think Picasso would make is actually from when he was a very young boy, when he was first learning how to paint. He painted in a more traditional style. All right. This is Fernando Botero. He was a Colombian figurative artist and sculptor. He His signature style is known as Botero. Bo Boterismo, and he depicts people and figures in a large, exaggerated volume, which can represent political criticism or humor. I really like this one that he did of the Mona Lisa right here. I think that one's pretty funny. All right, this is Pedro Linares Lopez, and he is a famous for his paper mache animal and mythical figures called Alebrijes. He was born in Mexico City, and he created piñatas as well as other paper mache figurines to make a living. And when he was 30, during an illness, he began to dream about these surreal mythical creatures. And I don't know about you, but these remind me a lot of the spirit guides in the movie Coco, which I think are really, really cool. All right, this is Yachty, and he was a uh, architect from Catalan, Spain, and he um, created his most famous artwork is the Sagrada Familia Cathedral, which actually was never finished. It was the last thing that he worked on, and he um, he died in a trolley accident when it was 
being constructed and I don't think his plans were complete so they never finished it and a lot of times when you see images of this cathedral there will be cranes in the background because they're actually still working on it which is really crazy. He incorporated ceramics and stained glass and wrought ironwork and forging and carpentry and into all of his um, artwork, all of his buildings. And for the most part, they are, um, are all located in Barcelona. This is Kino, who is an Argentinian cartoonist. His most famous cartoon is the comic strip Mathilda, um, which was popular in the Americas and Europe. And he used his cartoon to do a lot of political commentary, which you may have noticed is a theme among a lot of these artists. This is Carmen Lomas Garza. She's an American artist and illustrator. She was well known for her paintings and she is well known for her paintings and ofrenda. she's still alive. And her Papel Picado, which is the um, cut paper flags that you see sometimes. Um, she her artwork is inspired by her mexican american heritage she does a lot of paintings of large family groups where there's a lot of things going on she was um the second of five children and she is from kingsville texas which was right on the border of texas and mexico this is frida Kahlo. she is a mexican painter known for her many self-portraits frida was born or Frida had polio, so she had a hard time walking as a child. And then in her 20s, she was in a horrible trolley accident. Artists should stay away from trolleys, I think. She was in a horrible trolley accident that shattered her the bones in her legs and pelvis and her back too. And she had to spend a lot of time in bed. And because of that, she was always around. So she painted herself a lot. She um, has, has a lot of her paintings are autobiographical. She mixes realism with fantasy. And at the time, there was a literary movement called mystical realism, um, <clears throat> which also mixed realism and fantasy together. <coughs> so she was kind of part of that group. Diego Rivera was a prominent Mexican painter. He is known for his large fresco murals, many of which are actually in the United States because he went to the United States and did commissioned murals in Detroit and San Francisco. He was also married to Frida Kahlo. They were kind of like an art power couple back in the, back when they were alive. This is Inez Alvidrez. She was born in Chihuahua, Mexico, and she, um, at a young age, moved to Beaumont, Texas, where she continues to live and work. She's still around. She's not that old. She um, works mostly in acrylics, and I really like how her art is kind of looks stained glass, even though they're painted. So that's a really, really interesting, she's got some really interesting stuff going on here. All right, and this is Jorge Gutierrez. He's a Mexican animator, director, painter, writer, voice actor, and production designer. He co-created with his wife the um, Nickelodeon cartoon El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera, and co-wrote and directed The Book of Life, which is a um, animated movie about Day of the Dead that coincidentally came around, around the same time as Coco, which we <coughs> already talked about. So. That is Jorge Gutierrez. Exit. <coughs> All right.